Hello guys, welcome to the knowledge domain, the concept of life sciences and biotechnology. This is a lecture series where we are discussing the renal excretion and previously we have discussed the role of antidiuretic hormone, the other name is VAT, vasopressin, how it is increasing the permeability in the nephron and it is helping in the reabsorption of the water as well as the we have discussed the role of the high osmolarity present in the medulla. So in this lecture, we are going to learn the role of the control centers, how it is sensing the water level in the body. So water deficit means the body has less water. So if the water is less, but the solute amount is the same, so the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid will increase and the osmoreceptor present in the control center, they will shrink because they will also release the water from the cells and once it is it is shrink then there will be a signal because of that there will be the ADH secretion so when the ADH will be increased in the plasma it will increase the permeability of the water in the digital convoluted tubule as well as the collecting duct to increase the water okay so water will be reabsorbed but when there will be the extra water then this process will be inhibited, means it is not a water deficit signal, so it is inhibited, so water will be excreted. How? Because the ADH will not be secreted. So, where is the center? So, this is the pituitary. So, in the anterior hypothalamus near the supra optic nucleus, there are these osmoreceptor cells. These are the osmoreceptor cells present where? In the anterior hypothalamus near supraoptic nucleus. So okay, this is the supraoptic neuron and this is the osmoreceptor. So these are the cells. So when that is the water scarcity is there, means the concentration of the solute will increase. So the cells present here, they will shrink. And because of that, they will initiate a signal or start a stimulus. Because of this, there will be the uh, release of the ADH that is stored in the posterior pituitary. Okay, so what this ADH will do, it will go and increase the permeability of the digital tubule as well as the collecting box. So that water will be reabsorbed when they enter the circulation. So it will not be excreted. So we are preserving the water. Next is, so stimulation of ADH released by one is the osmotic receptor and what are the other mechanisms? The blood pressure or the blood volume. So if there is more water, so the blood volume will increase because of the increase in, in, in the blood volume, there is an increase in the blood pressure. So where this will be sensed. So the blood pressure and the blood volumes are sensed in the receptors, baroreceptors present in the aortic arch. Okay, so if these are the aortic arch receptors or these are the baroreceptors, as well as these are the carotid sinus receptors, so the present here are the baroreceptors. What is their role? Means they sense that there is too much water in the body because of that the blood volume has increased. So what is the, the role? Baroreceptor, it will stop the secretion of the ADH. So if the blood volume is increased, then ADH will not be secreted. So water will be excreted out. Okay. So and there is a low pressure region in, in the cardiac atria. So in the atrium, the two, vent, two chambers of the heart, in that there is a low pressure region. When the pressure is low, means the water is less. So this signal will go to the control center and it will initiate to secrete the ADS to restore the water, okay. So afferent stimuli, that is, from the baroreceptor, they will go to the vagus and the pharyngeal, glossopharyngeal knobs. Then synapses in the nuclei of, of, of the tractor solitarius and the hypothalamic nuclei that is present in the hypothalamic nuclei from that ADH will be secreted. When? When the low pressure region of, of the cardiac artery, I mean, there is a scarcity of the water. So we need to preserve the water. So this is the schematic, how it, it will work. So there are three types of senses on blood pressure, blood volume, and the osmoreceptor present in the control center. And this is the high blood pressure or the high blood volume that is located in the baroreceptor, the aortic arch, 
and the carotid sinus and the low pressure in the cardiac artery. That we need to remember. Okay. So next one is one is the volume, another is, is the osmotic pressure. Okay. So how they are regulating the water volume that is depicted here when it is a volume. Okay. So as long as there is no 10% change, I mean it needs at least 10% change for the plasma ADS to be secreted. So when the blood pressure is changing 10%, then only it is activating the signal that whether to release the ADS or not to release the ADS. So it is slightly less sensitive compared to the osmoreceptor. Here you see the change in the percentage and the plasma ADS, they are directly proportional. So osmoreceptor is very sensitive and the baroreceptor actually, it needs a larger change in the blood volume to start a signal or that is threshold enough to change in the release or the not releasing of, of the ADH. Okay. So these are the summary. Increase ADH means that will help in restoring the water level of the body or reabsorption of the water and decrease the water in the urine so that it is concentrated urine. So plasma osmolarity is high, means solute concentration in the plasma is high. Blood volume will be decreased, like in the cardiac atrium. Blood pressure will be decreased, and these are the other clinical situations like the nausea, hypoxia, and there are drugs like the morphine, nicotine, sap cyclophosphamide, their role is to store or to, to reabsorb the water, okay, and not to let to be excited. Next is the decreased ADS, plasma osmolarity will decrease, the opposite of this blood volume, blood pressure will increase, and, and the drug like alcohol, clonidine, and the haloperidol, they, when this type of scenario is there, the person, they urinate more. So next one is the importance of the thirst. We don't know the ADH. So ADH is to preserve the water. So along with it, simultaneously, there is a thirst sensation. So that we, we feel the urge to drink water so that we can supplement the body with, with the water. So along with whatever water is present in the body, with, the body does not want to, to excrete it out. It wants to reabsorb and preserve it. Same time, Simultaneously, there is the sensation of the thirst, so that person will drink and increase the water of the body. So the fluid intake is regulated by the thirst mechanism. So secretion of the ADS and drinking water, it is usually in the same center. So once it is secreting the ADS, the person also feel means thirsty, so that there is the urge of drinking water which together with the osmoreceptor and the ADS mechanism maintains control, extracellular fluid osmolarity and the sodium concentration. Okay. So what increases the thought? Exactly the same thing what we have discussed earlier, plasma osmolarity when it is high, blood volume, blood pressure is low, or the angiotensin is high, or the mouth is dry, or we feel dryness inside the esophagus, stomach means uh, that is the cause of drinking water. The opposite of this decrease the thirst, like the plasma osmolarity is low, blood pressure, blood volume is high, angiotensin is low. And the gastric distension means we, we have ran up water in the body, so we don't need to drink any more water, okay? So where the thirst centers are located, anterior, anterolateral in the preoptic nucleus that we have already discussed in another small area, that one stimulated electrically for immediate drinking. So this is physiological mechanism, but in the experiment we can do, uh, in the animal experiment, we can prove it as a confirmation that by manipulating the neuron stimulus, we can let the animal of feeling thirsty. One continues as long as the stimulation lasts. So from this, we get the information about the human. And whatever they control, the urge of drinking water or the mechanism of feeling the thirsty, these are called the thirst centers. So cardiopulmonary and the systemic 
arterial pyro receptors in the circulation we have discussed earlier whatever is responsible in letting the release of the ads from the posterior pituitary or inhibiting the release of the ads so the same means the receptor they are also controlling the cost so sodium increases only about 2 molecule and per liter above the normal in the thrust mechanism is activated so this is the summary so in this one this is the sodium concentration in the plasma is almost 142 millimolar so with the change in the sodium intake the plasma sodium concentration will means maintain in, in the plasma it is not changing drastically but when the ads thrust system block means the ads mechanism as well as the filling of the drinking water or the filling of the thirsty that is blocked then you see one of the sodium intake is there means it is directly increasing the sodium in the plasma concentration so this system is not in work so there is nothing that controls the level of the sodium in the plasma but once this is in active means it maintains means there will be more sodium will be excreted if that there is a sodium intake and it will be maintained at the same coming at the physiological level of the sodium that is almost 142 millimolar in the plasma thank you